make sure you check out my website pcteach.me where you can look at all the videos in particular category orders also have the ability to contribute your own posts if you wish and I hope to see you there right we're going to talk about on this video the for each loop in integration services now the example in front of us is SQL 2008 bids um, however you can do exactly the same thing in SQL 2005 if you do happen to have 2008 available to you you can download this um, example file from my website pcteach.me um, if you haven't registered register and then find the applicable post and you should see it on there to download um, so I've fully annotated this this particular example so I'm not actually going to create anything in this one I'm going to actually talk you through it um, so hopefully step by step you can actually create your own for each loop without the actual um, exercise files however it will be quite useful um, to actually download so you can see how it all ticks and compare yours to mine so what is the for each loop well what we're going to do in this is we're going to look at a series of different files and iterate through them and consolidate them into one particular data set Wow, that sounds very complicated, but it isn't actually. Um, however, integration services isn't the most helpful thing when it comes to trying to fault find errors. Right, well, before I actually go on to the actual control flow and talk about each element, let's just inspect the data that we're going to bring in. So I'll just go over to the exercise file location, and inside here we have um, a Excel files and a results file. So the results is where we're going to dump everything. Um, I've elected in this case to use a CSV file. Um, with the Excel files, these are the individual um, files that we want to actually import. Now, very important here is if we look at each individual file, you'll see that we've got a division, first name, last name, middle initial, first name, um, last name first and so forth so it's just a way of seeing the information a bit clearer so there we go it's just the full name either via the first name or the last name first um, so all of these are related to accounts however if I just now open up HR you'll see exactly the same structure it's very important the structure must be the same and you can see we've got HR and a load of different people so ultimately what I want to do is each one of these files I want to import and then slap into one specific data set now you could argue at this point and say well all I've got to do is put in several um, control flow tasks for each particular spreadsheet you can do that however why go over the trodden ground if you can set it up once why don't you just have it iterate through all of the actual files However, before I just carry on let's just talk about the other elements just around the side um, we have two scripting tasks which I'll go into after we've covered the main for each loop which just basically checks does the actual um, results file exist if it doesn't then just go ahead and do the loop however if it does exist I want to delete the results file then start the actual container now I have the same thing with the error file which we'll come to in a moment but again we have another file that we need to check to see if it exists if it does exist we delete the file if it doesn't exist we just start the loop off okay so pens at the ready coffee on standby let's go into the actual for each loop container now it is a bit of a chicken and egg because the for each loop container has several different enumeration paths we can go through now to see those what you can do is just drag and drop the for each loop container which you can see over here onto the screen and then when you double click on it it will bring up a list of options now in this dialog box we have a general section which just says for each loop container where the important stuff happens is on the other three particular um, pages so let's go to collection this is probably the most important one that you need to go to at the top we have the enumerator type ie how are we actually looping through if for each means that we've got one of many files to go through it could be one it could be a million um, so what are we actually inspecting what is the first file what is the last file or what is the first record what is the last record so what we do have is a drop down box on here and if you click on there there's a plethora of different options you can do to get the information other examples I've seen in the past is using the ADO.NET schema row set enumerator which basically allows you to run a scripting task prior to using the for each loop so you can go through a particular row or series of rows of information and do work off it now underneath this though we have um, 
the actual enumerator configuration. Now, because we've chosen file enumeration, we can see that we've got a folder path, which just basically takes me to the location I've just shown you um, here. So all I'm telling it to do is go to that location. Now, underneath it, I'm also then restricting it because there could be lots of different files in here. There could be CSVs, Word documents, the works. I'm telling it to filter just purely to the XLS extension. And then we also have an option underneath here to say, what are we retrieving? Is it just the name and the extension? In this case, it.xls, hr.xls, or are we trying to get the fully qualified, which would include the actual folder path, so it would include all of that in its actual numeration. Now, okay, if you've ever done any kind of programming like a for next loop, you always have to assign a variable so it knows where it is at the moment, because how does it know whether it's on the IT file, the HR file, the uh, marketing file. Well, this is where we need to use a variable map. So I'm just going to move on to the next page where I'm telling it that I've got a variable set up called user Excel file name. And what that means is whatever I choose in the item, so when it goes through one at a time, what it will do is it will map that value to that variable. So I'm just going to cancel this just to show you that I've already set up in SSIS and variables, you will see I've got a series of variables already set up, which I'll come to in, in more detail later. But as you can see, there's one there called Excel file name, and I've got a string, and I've just given it a default value of accounts.xls to get us started with. Um, so going back to the loop container, that maps basically the items within this folder to that specific variable. So the next step after this is, okay, we've now defined the variable, but now how do I tell it to go and pick up the data and spit it out somewhere else? Well, this is where we go into the actual data flow task. So by and large, you've done the hard bit, which is the full reach loop container. So I'm telling it to go to the folder and then map it to the variable. So I'm just going to cancel that to come out. And then what we need to do is actually look at the data flow task that we've actually assigned within here. So I'm just going to double click to go in and look for the information. There we are. And so what I've got is I've got the Excel source, which if I open up, just tells me it's using a connection manager called CM Excel file, which I'll show you in a moment. And I'm just telling it to pick up sheet one. Now, if I preview that, it should pull through there we go, the accounts information, so we know that's working, it's actually latched onto the file successfully. And then if we go into the column section, there we go, we can see it's all mapping quite nicely. And then what we've got is the Excel file, is it then spits the results out into a results destination, which I'm choosing as a CSV extract. So it's not going to a database, but as I've already put in the annotations here, you can actually put it into a database. Now, if there are any errors that occur, I'm telling it to also spit it out to another CSV um, area, which is just called CSV er errors. So on a mapping basis, it'll bring all of those records in and then return the error code and then the narrative to that particular error. So if you followed any of the other videos on integration services, this is pretty straightforward stuff. However, the key thing here is how do I know that that particular data source at the top there is going to change every time I go through each Excel value? Well, this is the important part, and this is not controlled by anything in this area here. It's actually controlled down by the connection managers. So what I'm going to do is going to go down to the um, CM Excel file, and if I double click on that, you'll see See, it just looks like any standard Excel connection manager. I've just got a particular file. I've chosen the default by um, by default, and I've told it it's a 97 to 2003 Excel file. But how do I tell it to change? Well, this is where we have a bit of magic going off off onto the side. So what we've got to do is go over to the properties section and then in here expand expressions. Make sure you've got the connection manager selected. And then in the expressions you will see that I've got a connection string which if I just click on the ellipses we can go in and see. So what I've got is I've got sort of a generic connection string that I've created however I'm defining sort of two things here. Another variable called the folder where it's located which incidentally is up here at the top left, the variables. And also the actual file name. Now remember the file name is changing via the loop and the only other thing on the connection string here is the HDR which just basically means 
means header row equals yes. So I'm making sure I bring in the field names of department, first name, last name, etc. So if I just cancel that, that now is basically switched on. You're done. So now what will happen is every time it runs, it will then change the connection string based on the connection manager to the new expression, which we're telling it on every time is basically, um, if I just bring up the ellipses again, um, we've got the variable of Excel file name. So I'll just cancel that. Let's just have a quick look at the variables here. So we've got the folder, and as you can see, I've got the actual folder saying PC Teach Me SSIS for each loop, and then Excel files at the end. So that is a static variable. I'm not really going to touch that again. Um, however, it does allow you to repurpose this particular um, SSIS package in the future. So with that done, that's more or less the work complete. So I'm just going to run it and let's see what happens. So um, if I just execute the package, it should now whiz through. Uh, you may notice that the um, data flow task of import data blinked a little bit. Now what I'm going to try and do is if I go to the data flow ta task and then execute it from here, watch this area. It should blink like crazy. And as you can see, it's gone through it several times. So I'm just going to end the execution of that. Let's have a look and see what it's done in the background. Well, in here, I'm just going to come out of my for each loop Excel files and go to results. And I've now got an errors TXT. Great, it's 0K, meaning I have no errors. Let's go into the results TXT. And there we have it. Let's just bring it up so you can see it clearly. And what we have is going downwards accounts HR IT marketing overseas sales which are all the actual Excel files so by all means copy and paste some more in um, in the Excel files make some more Excel files as long as they're in the same structure it should abide to it now to finish off this what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into here and just talk about the other ancillary options I've put off to the side. So what I've done is I've created some scripting packages here, uh, scripting tasks I should say, um, which basically identify if the file exists. Now in here we've got a standard file task option um, which is um, controlled by the file system task control here um, and all that does is tells it to delete the file which is the CSV results however bear in mind um, if I have actually um, not got the file there and I delete it will error so what I need to do is do a little bit of error capturing before and this is done by using um, this particular script here now I'll just go through the first one because it's exactly the same on the other side so I'm telling it on my variables um, section that um, I'm going to use a um, results file Excel which is just an integer of 32 um, and that's my read write I'll just edit the script and here we have the um, script um, very important to say that you must type this command in system.io um, which allows you to get to some of the other commands that we need to uh, run and everything else by default is here until we get right down to the bottom which is where our sub main is now all I've done is literally put a very simple if statement in saying if the file exists and given it its actual full location you could use a variable then tell it to um, say file exist is one otherwise it's zero now come out of that and then the final thing that happens is on the actual data flow tasks I've actually put in an expression just to say if it equals one then off you go to delete the file otherwise go off to does not exist so that is a lightning quick tour of for each loop and some um, scripting to go with it so I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching